What's up guys? Welcome back. I'm Lorena from Green Healthy Cooking and today I'm going to show you how to make a instant pot lamb stew, kind of Moroccan style um, and very, very flavorful. So for this instant pot lamb stew, you're going to need two pounds of cubed lamb. Now for all of those people that say, ew, lamb is so stinky. Well, it all depends on the quality of the lamb. I highly, highly, highly recommend you go to your butcher, not your regular grocery store. Go find a good butcher and then ask him for his best cubed lamb. So once you get that, which is not stinky at all, it doesn't smell any more than chicken or a beef. It's all about the freshness of the lamb. Um, you're gonna go ahead and press the saute button on your Instant Pot to heat it up. And um, while you're waiting for it to heat up, you're going to add a tablespoon of butter and about another tablespoon of olive oil. Now, once your Instant Pot says it's hot, it's time to brown our lamb. Now I know this is like a super boring, time consuming and messy part when we make any kind of stew, but I really recommend it. The difference in taste is huge. It tastes so much, so much better when you brown your lamb. And uh, of course you have to do it in batches. Don't, please don't dump all the cubed lamb into the instant pot. It will just cook in its own juices and it won't brown. So you have to cook it in four to five batches. So you put it in, you add a little bit of salt, you add a little bit of pepper, you let it brown for anywhere from two to three minutes on one side. Then you take some tongs and you flip each individual cube around so it can brown on the other side and you wait another two to three minutes and then you set it aside onto a plate or a bowl where you can leave it while you're doing the other batches. Once all your lamp is browned, you're going to set that aside and add a cup of chopped onion into your Instant Pot. Now make sure that the saute button is still on because most Instant Pots have a function where after 30 minutes the heating plate just shuts off. So make sure that your saute button is still on and your heating plate is still hot. So add the onion, then add finely minced garlic, anywhere from two to three cloves. Then add a tablespoon of ginger paste, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and a teaspoon of ground coriander. Then you're gonna give this a mix and stir fry it until the onion is slightly soft. And then you're going to want to add a little bit of water, anywhere from a quarter to half a cup. This will depend on um, how well your Instant Pot gets to pressure without getting the burn warning. I know there are some Instant Pots that are a little bit more moody than others. Mine isn't moody at all, so usually with a quarter cup it just works fine. But if you ever had the burn warning, I recommend adding up to half a cup of water. Then take a wooden spoon and scrape the bottom and deglaze everything to make sure that you do not get the burn warning later on. Make sure that all the little bits and pieces all the browned and burnt stuff is lifted off the base of your instant pot and then all you have to do is put your browned lamb back into the instant pot give it all a quick stir put on the lid seal it and set it to 25 minutes on high pressure after the 25 minutes we're not gonna do anything to the instant pot we're gonna wait for natural pressure release Natural pressure release means that you don't touch the sealing valve. You just let it be and you wait until the safety pin drops all on its own. This will take anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. And then once the safety pin dropped, it's safe to open the lid. And now we're gonna go to the second part of this uh, Instant Pot lamp stew, which is, in my opinion, the most important. We're going to add the zest of one orange take a zester and just completely zest the whole orange and add the zest but only the zest not the juice and then we're going to add eight dates and eight apricots uh, they're dried dates and apricots by the way so we're going to add dried fruit then we're going to add two tablespoons of slivered almonds a tablespoon of honey and a teaspoon of ras al hanout 
This is a Moroccan spice mix that tastes absolutely amazing and delicious. And yes, you can make your own, but honestly, there's so many spices in there. I prefer to have just Ras Al Hanout in my spice drawer and it takes up very little space. It's just spices. There's no additives to it. So try and find a good one and just add a teaspoon of Ras Al Hanout uh, into your lamb stew. And then press the saute button again so you can get everything to a boil. And this is in order to reduce the sauce inside. So to reduce the side, it's important that you do not put on the lid. We're gonna leave the lid away. We're gonna wait for everything to simmer and we're gonna let it simmer for anywhere from five to 10 minutes until you feel your sauce is a little thicker and super, super delicious. Your dry fruit will soften up a little bit, but your almond slivers will stay hard because if you simmer the almond slivers a little bit too long, they become kind of soft and nah, not so good. So I prefer to add the almond slivers very much at the end simmer it for five to 10 minutes, and then it's time to serve. Now you can serve this in a bowl, sprinkle a little bit more almonds on top, maybe some fresh chopped parsley or cilantro and just dive in. The lamb is fall apart tender. It's so, so, so delicious. Another way to serve this lamb stew, and I absolutely love this, is I take some de-stocked, washed and dried curly kale, I cut it into very fine stripes, put it in a bowl, then add a little bit of olive oil, a tiny bit of apple cider vinegar, salt, pepper, and then I massage all that into the kale. I highly recommend you use your hands to massage it in. It's the only way you can get it into the, all the tiny little nooks and crannies of the kale. You use your hands, massage it all in very well. Add about half a cup to a cup of your delicious lamb stew, about half a cup of cooked farro, and then about a quarter to a third of a cup pomegranate seeds. And here again, you can sprinkle it with a little bit of chopped up almond slivers and some chopped up fresh parsley. And that's about it. This is what I call a Middle Eastern farro salad. So, 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 so yummy. And I hope you give it a try. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more recipes like this one. Click the little notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new recipe and I'll see you with my next video. Bye.